peace beautiful beings and welcome back to more than asana i am so excited to be here with you this is our third episode so the purpose of this video is for those of you who may have never heard the word asana before may not know um, exactly where it comes from when it pertains to the yoga practice and i just kind of wanted to break it down in simple terms for those that are interested to know a little bit more pretty much asana is a sanskrit word that comes from india and it comes from the philosophical phil philosophical philosophical teachings that are from the yoga practice that comes from India. I wanted to make this video and this podcast called More Than Asana so that we can learn about those principles of yoga philosophy. And this video is for anyone that's interested. And before we get into it, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, please leave some comments down below. I would love to get into more conversation and to just know more of what you might be um, interested in learning about in terms of yoga philosophy, in terms of yoga practice in general, um, anything that you want to learn more about that is outside of the physical practice. I would love to dive deep into it with you and learn more alongside you as well. So pretty much we can start off by talking about Sanskrit. Sanskrit is an ancient Indo-European language that came out of the Indian subcontinent. Its origin in the ancient in the ancient world, um, its roots trace back to before Christ. <laughs> and it's one of the oldest languages in the world. And it has a lot of influence on the Indian spiritual texts that a lot of the people would um, live by um, when looking for enlightenment. A lot of these texts were what people would go to in order to actually apply these practices into their daily lifestyle, in order to be better people, in order to be better selves um, for the community around them and for themselves. And um, sometimes you'll hear some of these Sanskrit words in a yoga practice used by either the teacher or if you're just um, learning about yoga i'm sure you've heard of shavasana that is an example of a sanskrit word so with that sanskrit was heavily applied in the philosophical teachings that were in buddhism hinduism um, jainism and Pretty much those are the main uh, philosophical texts and because yoga has a, um, firm roots in India, a lot of those texts kind of um, correlate or align with the teachings that we learn in yoga philosophy when it comes to how you practice in your lifestyle and outside of your mat. So one of the main philosophical texts that we use in yoga is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And these sutras are divided into four different books. And these books pertain to the philosophy and practice of yoga. Um, and it breaks it down into pretty much eight limbs of yoga that we look at that will pertain to different areas of our life and um, pretty much the benefits of what the yoga practice can bring into your life and the lives of others. Not only are these sutras a philosophical text to bring enlightenment, but it also is a great way to incorporate more self-discipline, more self-awareness, more mental clarity, and of course, spiritual growth into your life if you apply these eight limbs of yoga into your life. And asana is one of those eight limbs that are found in the yoga sutras. So pretty much in short, the eight limbs of yoga are the yamas, which is ethical restraints, the niyamas, which are personal observations, asana, which are the physical postures, pranayama, which is breath work and breath control, pratyahara, which is withdrawal of the senses, Dharana, which is concentration, Dhyana, which is meditation, and Samadhi, which is what the enlightenment state, finding total union and harmony, um, that oneness. Those are the eight limbs of yoga. In short, 
and I can definitely make another video breaking each one down a little bit deeper, um, sharing my own experiences of how I've practiced each of those limbs and what results I saw after incorporating these practices. Yeah, so if that's something you want to see, let me know. <laughs> but pretty much, I wanted to make this video specifically about asana so that we can understand where asana comes from and also why I think it's so important to discuss um, not only asana, but the other eight limbs that are pertaining to our self-discipline and self-awareness. So the beauty of asana is that they are the physical postures that you see on social media. They are the physical postures that you see in every yoga class. Um, they are so helpful in promoting physical health, um, flexibility, strength, mental clarity, calmness, you know, all those beautiful results that come from practicing these physical postures on a daily basis. And I think not only helps with your posture or your physical appearance and how we sit more aligned and become more um, self-aware in the way our body moves and things as such that happen, um, this is, again, only one part of what we should be applying into our yoga practice and so pretty much the reason i decided to make this podcast more than asana is because i do believe um that something that not only myself has noticed as a yoga instructor but i'm sure so many other people that not only instruct but practice yoga have realized the the loss in the western practice of the the application of these other limbs of yoga into the practice and into the teachings when we're sharing it with those that may be new to the practice. And I think that some people can feel this unfulfillment in a practice because those other limbs are not being applied, whether it's because the teacher may not practice those themselves or they just don't really know how to share those experiences in a way that someone else can pertain it to their own lives and have their own experience. Whatever the case may be, unfortunately, we have lost that, that essence of bringing the other aspects of yoga into the practice. And that's why I'm here with you today, because I want to bring out those other ones. And you know what, maybe I will go a little bit deeper <laughs> into them. And I do think they're so important and not only will have adding these parts of the practice into your yoga practice be it won't only be easy to do but it will be natural in a sense that you may think if you've been practicing asana for so long that wow how has this not always been applied <laughs> so i am so grateful that i get to even share this um simple revelation with you and i definitely recommend reading the yoga sutras if this is something you want to learn more about but yeah actually i'm gonna stop right here and i will get deeper into them individually later on um, i am a bit short on time today but i definitely want to get deeper into it i definitely want to share those um limbs with you a little bit deeper the yamas and the niyamas they go breaking down into their own subcategories as well that you can dive deep into so i think that is what this first series of more than asana will be heavily focused on as we learn those things together thank you for sharing this time with me and i hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and feel free to watch any of my other uh, meditation videos if you need some time to yourself some calmness those videos are intended for you to be able to meditate any time of the day alongside me with either a guided meditation or just absolute silence if you need more of that in your life so thank you again for being here i send you all my love and have a wonderful day peace